Hi, welcome to Crafting with Kimberly. This month, we're going to be making cardboard relief art. Sounds fancy, but it's really easy. All you need is a basic cardboard box, a pair of scissors, a glue stick, maybe a pencil. We all get boxes. There's tons of boxes and, and everywhere we look. What do we do with them afterwards? Do we recycle them? Do we throw them out? Do we store more stuff in them? Well, here's another thing we can do with them. We can make some pretty cool art. This is a cardboard relief picture. And the reason it's called cardboard relief are these little areas right here. This is your basic cardboard box. This is the front part of the cardboard peeled off, leaving these really neat ridges and little pieces left over. This is just a white cardboard box cut up. Part of the inside curled around. And you can see that it's also 3D ridges, shelves. Just some really neat abstract art. You can also make a picture if you want to do something specific. For this one, I wanted to make birch trees. I like birch trees. Um, again, the only thing, this is a regular cardboard box with part of the paper peeled off. White cardboard with just a black Sharpie marker. The grassy fringe is the inside of a cardboard box, which is, I will show you how to take that out. Again, some roses that I just curled around, glued it to the back, the paper. And then I just took a Sharpie again and made some pictures. But you can see the neat, smooth, rough, different aspects of it, just out of cardboard. But here it was my very first picture that I made. Anybody who likes coffee, you know what that is. Here was an actual circle that I cut out specifically just to get that shape and then peeled off the rest of the paper to make these fun cloud shapes left part to make the sky. So this is a specific shape. This is a more organic pull. And then when you pull, you'll see this neat little pieces of paper that are left which kind of gives you a little bit more texture. From the paper that I tore off, I glued on, this also is 3D, I glued on, and this, these are the wave shapes, and then a piece of the cardboard box cut to make like a 3D shape. Some really different things that you can do with it. You can have fun. There are actually cardboard artists out there that make a ton of money. Um, from their artwork. It's just absolutely gorgeous. So maybe I've found a new medium for you to try. If not, if you don't like it, it's easily recycled. So it's a lot of fun. So let's see some of the different things that we can do. Basically, you just need a cardboard box. When you have a box, all boxes are created the same. They come in a box shape, but there's always going to be one edge to your box that you can pull apart and then come up with a big piece of cardboard. All the boxes are made the same. So it's a great way to recycle some boxes. Some have um, white colors, others have other colors, or just the plain cardboard box shape. When you peel cardboard away, you get this really neat corrugated paper. Um, you can, they sell actually corrugated crimpers that will make paper like this, but look at how cool this is when it comes apart from the cardboard. The way to get that, an easy, easy thing to do, is you take your cardboard and you soak it for a little bit. It doesn't have to be long. You don't want to soak it overnight. It'll disintegrate. Um, 30 minutes at the most. Otherwise, you can just kind of let it soak for... I'd say the smallest amount is about 10 minutes if you want an easy pull. So once your cardboard is wet, you can see, unlike other paper, it's still extremely solid in its form. That's why you see cardboard boxes left out in the rain and they don't fall apart. So cardboard's really sturdy. But after you've soaked it, you can see 
how easy it is to pull away. You can peel these pieces away and then you get this really neat paper from it. This one almost was a double layer, so this was a really sturdy box. This had a double layer of the corrugated paper. So you can see how I am just pulling that right away. And then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to lay these out on something, lay them out side to dry if it's not windy. Um, I have one of the wooden clothes hangers um, that you can lay clothes over, so I lay mine over that to, to dry. But you do definitely want, after you've peeled it, let it dry. That was really easy to peel, you can see. When you have other pieces of cardboard, I'll take a little piece, something small, I'm just gonna use something small like that. You can see the cardboard spaces in between. So there's a piece of paper. So if you start to peel that paper, I'm gonna do the white side. You peel that paper. If I peel it, you can see it didn't really peel away that well but that's how you get the corrugated part and then the part that's the relief part. If you pull with the grain, you can see cardboard has a grain. The lines that go up and down, that's the grain, like wood, but that's the grain of the cardboard. If you pull that way, it's a little easier. So you can see my grain goes this way. So if I try to peel this, this is gonna come off a little bit easier and you can see that I can get into it this way as opposed to going this way. Another way to get into that area is if you wanted, say you wanted that part gone, if you take your pencil and you can put it in and start to go along the ridges and peel areas, that helps you. I personally like a glue stick when we're going to put pieces together. You could use the liquid glue. If you're going to do that, I would suggest taking a scrap piece of cardboard, pouring some of the glue on there and having um, an old paintbrush. Don't use one of your good ones, use an old cheap one because once you've used it for glue, even if you really wash it well with soap and water, it's still always going to have a little bit of glue residue on there, so I wouldn't want to paint with it, but use that as your designated uh, paintbrush for glue. That way you can get the little pieces like right there. See how that's almost kind of see-through in a shape. You wouldn't want to just pour a bunch of glue down and try to put that on there. Definitely don't want to use a glue gun. Um, a glue gun will dry where you'll see your glue, whereas a, uh, the school glue, if you're gluing, you really won't see it. So you can see on this one again, if I go really close, you can't see the glue. If I was to use a glue stick, you would see globs of glue in there. And that's really not what you want. You want it to be organic looking where you're not going to see those parts. So again, I prefer just a really easy glue stick. This is basically imagination unlimited. Whatever you think you want to create out of this. You could do abstract like this. I just did squares, rectangles, couple circles, couple triangles. If you really wanted to do a picture, as, I, as you see here, really easy to do. First, I'll show you how to make a birch tree if you like the way that looks and in fact what I'll do is I will put this here so you can still see it while I'm videoing. So I happen to use, I have a nice cardboard box that has the white in it. With a tree, most children will draw a tree and they'll draw two straight lines and that's the tree trunk. 
Well, as we know in nature, if you really look at a tree, it's got the bark and it's it has movement in it. So you wouldn't want to just draw, you know, cut a straight line. Take your take your scissors, kind of go in a little bit. As you can see, I'm just kind of going in and out, not keeping the straight edge. Just as I'm cutting, I'm doing just some organic shapes here, just so it's not a completely straight line. I don't have to go all over the place, so you can see. I just kind of zigzagged. So now I'm gonna do that to the other side. I'm gonna decide how wide I want my tree. I'll go here, and you just kind of cut. Kind of go zigzaggedy a little bit. Don't wanna do a perfectly straight line. This is when drawing a straight line is not needed. Kind of go back and forth. So now I have an organic tree shape. The easiest way to do a birch tree to get these lines, it looks so complicated, it is so easy. You just make dashes. I'm just going to take a Sharpie and I'm gonna just draw some little zigzaggedy lines as you can see back and forth. I'll try to do that a little closer here and I'll try to do this backwards. That's how easy it is I can do that. Just kind of do some lines back and forth. You know, don't draw a completely straight line, make it a little jaggedy. Here, I think I want a knot in this little area. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my Sharpie and I'm just gonna color that in. And you can see that looks more like a knot. So I'm just, I'm just kind of going back and forth, making a few lines here and there, back and forth. Maybe I'll do another knot down here. And look how that was so easily transformed into a birch tree. Can't really go wrong. I mean, this is a little squiggly line there, but it looks pretty cool. So that's the easy way to make a birch tree. For the branches right here, I just also took some of that white box and I'm just going to zigzag back and forth just a smaller a smaller piece. And again, I don't want a straight line. So I'm going to just cut into it a little bit. Just so it's a little more organic. And exactly the same thing. I'm going to take my Sharpie, use a pencil, use paint. I like things easy. Just Sharpie it. I also like to make sure when I, when I do a branch, I like to go right close to this edge right there, as you can see. So when you attach it to the tree, it looks like it should be there a little bit more. So you can see on this example, I just added, I added branches and just glued them on wherever I wanted to. So that's how you make a birch tree. If you want to do shapes, squares are easy. This is the edge of one of the boxes that I had cut off. The nice thing to do is I don't even need to, I don't need to draw lines. I don't need to measure it. I don't like to measure if I don't have to. I just cut. And the nice thing with the corrugated is it has your vertical lines. So if you're afraid of not cutting straight, bend it a bit. You'll instantly see where the line is that will let you cut it nice and easy. So now I have a couple, I have a couple lines. I'm not going to soak all mine because I don't want it to all come completely off. I'm just going to, again, start at one of the little edges. I'm just going to peel. See what happens. That peeled off very nicely. 
so you can see it left just a little bit. So for this one, I do want to peel all of it off. I want a whole corrugated area. So it can be a little fiddly, which means you just have to keep getting in there, pulling your parts away. Sometimes it comes off in that nice big chunk like you saw, sometimes it doesn't. A great trick, take your pencil for the areas that are left, push your pencil through it, that will lift up the cardboard, which is also a really kind of cool look too for dimension. When you're playing with cardboard like this, dimension is the key word. It really looks neat, so anything that has the dimension. But now you can see I have a nice, clean piece of cardboard. So now I want to put something else in there. I'm going to, I think I'm going to put that like that, offset it. I'm going to peel again. I'm just going to peel it down, see what happens. This time I have some parts left. I think I want to keep that. I like that. So to glue that on, I'm just going to take my glue stick. I'm only going to glue on part. I want this to overlap. So I'm gonna just put, put some glue on there. Decide where I want this to go. Push it on down. And I have kind of a neat piece. And as you can see, when you leave parts of it, it really gives you a, a, a unique art looking piece. Again, say I, say I want just the middle. You can take your pencil. You can also use an X-Acto knife. These are nice to use, but you have to be really careful because they are super sharp. If you want specific shapes drawn, an X-Acto knife is really good to use. Like I think what I'm gonna do is I'm, let's draw a diamond shape. And you don't want to pull it. I, I just kind of, almost like you're slicing bread. Carefully go through. Gives you a little bit more control that way. So I've made an organic, an organic diamond. I'm just cutting through again, just to make sure that I've gotten through that. And then I can use the blade to lift it up a bit. I really like just using the pencil. It's so much easier. It gives you a little bit more sturdiness. So now I don't have to throw this part away either. I can use this if I want to take white. That gives me a contrasting color. So you don't always want to throw your little bits away. Keep it for what you may want. So you can see that's how you would do a shape. For your big board, what I did, I decided the size that I wanted my picture to be, and then just pull. Go around, decide if you want your whole part taken off, if you want small pieces taken off. You can see this is really, when you're doing your background, this is the part that takes a while. If you totally wanted it to be off, then you could soak it for the few minutes, but then definitely you want to let that dry before you use it. Again, use your pencil if you want a big area. Start it up. You can take your pencil, go all the way through, break your lead, <laughs> but go all the way through, pushing as I go. That gives you a start to pull more. Some cardboard, depending on how old it is, some are really easy to pull off, as you saw for that little piece. Some like this are gonna be really fiddly. But you just keep going, deciding how much of that you want. I'm not gonna completely go through all the thing because you, you get the idea of it. Once I have areas that I like and that I want to keep, let's put this piece on. So now I'm going to take and put glue all the way around on this part. 
I like the school glue that has the purple color because then you can really know where you put your glue. That's very handy. I'm gonna just put this here up at the top. And you can see it just it goes on instantly. Um, you can fill this whole piece the way I did, just using all those different shapes. I had taken, I'm gonna find another piece here, to get the ridges, find the length that you want. I'm gonna probably do well, maybe, a, maybe a tiny quarter of an inch. I'm just gonna cut along the one edge. So you can see I have just a very thin piece. Take your glue stick and I am just gluing on the edge, being generous with it, so you can see there's that. So then I'm gonna decide where I want that. I'm gonna do some angles. So I'm setting it down where I want it. You do have to hold it a little bit. So get it in there, set it down a bit, And that should stay. If it doesn't stay, put on some more glue. But you can see that stays pretty well, pretty fast. And you can also put shapes down and then decide later, oh, I want some of the corrugated parts to show here. You can go in later and do that as well. So if you put some of your big parts on there, you can do that. You can go off the edge to make it look a little bit more exciting. Go inside. Again, I took the colored, white is a color, but I took the white cardboard and just by cutting tinier pieces, you would have a color set. If I wanted to, I could take my Sharpies, markers, colored pencils, color on that like I did with the birds to give color. When you're cutting shapes out, I just knocked that over as you can see. So you have to be a little careful till it really dries. But if you're cutting shapes out, you don't want to be too fine in your detail because if you look at these birds, you can see they don't really have feet. I drew the feet on. The cardboard is not that easy to cut out and because it's thick, it has a different um, texture to it. So you could use cardstock if you wanted to really put some details and some specifics, like if you wanted to add leaves, it'd be really neat um, to do some colors on just some cardstock and cut that out. So you can get fancy, but if you're looking for just basic shapes, um, a bird is really easy to draw. When you're drawing, take the picture of what you want to do and break it down into steps, and then it won't seem so hard. So basically, a bird, bird has an oval head. So I'm just going to draw an oval. So there's an oval. It has a triangle for a beak. So from the tip of that, I'm going to draw my beak. Then a bird's body, if you want to draw a basic one, it's almost like almost like a half moon. So from the head, I'm going to follow down, extend it out for the tail, come back in, and then continue on for my almost half moon. So you can see. There is the triangle, there's your triangle, there's your oval, extend it out for the tail, and just kind of a half moon. Now, is it a masterpiece? No, but if I showed you this, you're gonna say, oh, look, it's a bird. And depending on how you color it, 
color it blue, blue jay. Color it red, cardinal. Color it, color it yellow, female, cardinal, or a sparrow. You know, whatever you want to do. And then when you want to cut it out, again, you're not wanting to look for details. You're just looking at the basics. Because to try to cut out little lines, again, you can use the X-Acto knife when you're really wanting to look for some details. If you wanted to add feet, you could also make a little square down here. I'm going to cut out a square. Kind of like right in the middle of the bird's body. Continue on. So now I can take my pencil and kind of just draw two little lines there. And you've got a very rudimentary, basic bird shape. So when you're wanting to draw things, again, think shapes. Just break it down. Squint your eyes at it to see what kind of shape is that. And just really make the rudimentary, do a circle, do a square, do an oval, do triangle, do a half circle. Break it down into those shapes, um, especially if you're doing um, abstract art, then, it's, then you can do whatever you want to do. I'll show you also now how I did this grass. When you take your cardboard pieces apart, and after it dries, you have this really great corrugated paper. And I looked at that and I thought, boy, that looks like grass to me. So what I'm gonna do for this piece is, I don't want it very large, so I'm gonna cut this in half. Again, not caring about if it's a straight line or not. If I were to put it, wanted to put this on the bottom, the easiest way to really make sure that it stays on is you want to fold it over. So I'm gonna lift it up to about how high I want it, but then I'm going to take it and fold it over the back. And I wanna do that first before I cut so I know how much I have to have. Because that way, by folding it, that little piece still didn't have a chance to glue, so I'm gonna move that aside. By folding it to the back, you're going to really give it stability because I don't want to glue the front part of this. I want this to stay loose like it is here. So you can see I glued just the straight paper to the back and I just smoothed it out as I was gluing it. So that's why it became flat. And then you can see all the fringe. So I'm going to glue up a little ways. So I'm going to just glue it on a smaller piece. I don't want to put it on that big one. So I'm just going to take this little small one. So I'm going to put some glue. Just along the edge there. Fold it over, set it down, smooth it out. And again, because this has some wrinkles and it has some crimps in it, you do need to sit here and, and hold it for just a little bit as it dries, because it's not gonna dry instantly because you've bent it. So I like to really squeeze it down. I'm gonna cut that part off the edge and now I also want to glue a little bit here in the front so it's not going to completely fall off so get some more glue out there glue just about halfway Now, normally, I'm, I would let that sit for a little bit, just till it really give it a chance to dry, because as you can see, this piece kept falling off, just because I didn't let it sit there long enough. But you, I would let it sit. For the sake of the video, I'm going to go right into this. So 
basically where my fingers are, that's where it's glued. Back and part way to the front, and you can see it's automatically sticking out. So then I'm just going to follow the lines. I'm going to fringe it. So I'm just cutting down with my scissors, somewhat thin, because I want it to look like grass or fringe or whatever else you want it to be. For this, I'm gonna say that it's grass again. So you can see just cutting down like that, moving them around, bending them over. You know, grass is never completely straight either. Bending them around a little bit to make it look a little more organic. So you can see how you can make grass. I am also going to take a thin strip of this, again, the inside of the paper, and I'm going to just roll it completely up. I want it to, to feel that shape. So I'm going to roll it up, kind of squeeze it together. I'm going to unroll it now just so now it has the feeling that it wants to curl upon itself. So now to make a rose, you can see the inside of that is curled. I'm gonna take a little piece towards the outside, put some glue, because I don't want it to be a tight curl. I want it to have a little bit of space with it. if that makes sense. So you can see how that is not completely tight together. It gives more of an organic shape like this. Continue it around, bringing it around, seeing where I want it to go. And now I'm going to put glue on the edge. Hold it down. So now you can see that is basically an organic shaped rose. You can see in between it. I would also need to let this sit and dry. But again, for the sake of time, to glue that on, just set it down. Put a good helping of glue on the back of that. Then take your grass. I had mine just glued. That's gonna come off because I have to let it sit. But you can see that that would be the rose. And then once everything's really dried, then you can bring your grass to come out around it. So that's how you make grasses and roses. So basically, I have shown you all the things to get the to get the waves, the pieces of paper that you peeled. What I did is I just took those organic shapes, started to glue it on, bent it around a bit so parts of it stuck up, parts of it didn't. You can even bend it, give it your own little shapes, and you can glue that on. So that gives a neat, wavy effect. The seagull, I just took one of the white pieces, cut it extremely thin, and then just bent it in a basic shape. The mast was a piece like this, just standing straight up. And then again with this one, you can see here, I decided I wanted a little ledge, so I just took a piece of the paper and I followed the cardboard and I followed one of the lines and just bent it over. So I really wanted it, this to be very textural, very different shapes. So you can see all the different shadings in there like I said this to me this is what I really like the relief part of it where part of the paper is there part of it is gone that's the cardboard relief part and I really love the way that looks and then in the picture 
where it's a specific picture, to me, those parts that are still there looks like clouds versus your background, little patchy pieces. So think about some of the things that you would want to make. Um, again, circles, squares, triangles, basic primary shapes are great. Masks are a lot of fun to get a basic face shape, an oval or a round or a square, um, half a side of a face. Um, do your eyes differently, do your nose differently, do your mouth differently, change your, make that an eye, make that a mouth or a nose. You know, really fun shapes with that. You can do self-portrait, and they kind of turn out like Picasso, which are, you know, really cool, funky ways to do it, so you can make some masks that way. Um, landscapes, any kind of landscape that you think you want. You can see that I did the beach scene. You could do a mountain scene, you know, Tear off and start just doing some pieces like I did. See where it takes you. Pull off a few, get some shapes going, and, and see what it's telling you it, it wants to make. Use your markers to color it in. Use your paints to color it in. Use colored pencils. Um, really, the sky's the limit with this. Look and see what your, your shape is. This is from a dog food box that I have, and I love the pattern of the circles there already. With this one, I plan on, I'm going to follow the circles. I'm going to cut in on the circles and leave some spaces. And I'm going to leave the edges like this because then it's basically already framed. So I will probably cover this with paper if I don't paint it. And that's just a fun way to do it. So those are all the different things that you can do. I've shown you how to pull your paper to get to this part. I've shown you how to pull little sections off and leave parts. I've shown you how to pull it off completely. I've shown you how to stand it up. If you have the patience to let it just stay there and, <laughs> and let it be on, how to pull it away, how to start in the center. Again, if I want to come here, just take my pencil, peel it away. So that's a way to get into the middle and then just start peeling. So that's how you can get spots in the middle. You can use your X-Acto knife, the tips of your scissors, pencil. So all sorts of different ways. If you want shapes, you know, take whatever you have lying around the house. I have some duct tape. That's a perfect circle. I have two circles there. You've got the inside of the circle. You've got the outside of the circle. I've got a roll of chain. I've got a thing of thread. So look at all the small circles I have, and that would be an easy way to make them with circles. Trace things that way. Use your jars, um, squares, anything that you have, little pieces of paper that you already have. That's a great template. So all sorts of different things to do. This is pretty solid. Um, I've moved this around a little bit, and the only things that have come off have been the roses. So they're delicate in that sense that if you move it around, you will probably lose pieces off of it just with the school globe because it's not that sturdy. But once you make it, if you just put it somewhere and you set it, it's going to be pretty sturdy. It's going to stay on there. Things won't just fall off. They really have to be touched and moved to have them fall off. If you want, you can see I have mine in um, the little stands that you can get. They have those at the Dollar Tree, Walmart, all over the place. If you want to hang it, all I did was I took a piece of twine and just taped it down and then glued it. I put an, I put just a piece that I had sitting down. I glued it, then glued this, and then just taped right over that. So then you can hang it on your wall. So really easy to do. If you want to do a landscape, if you want to draw it out first to have the ideas of where you want to place your papers, you can do that. Or as I said, be organic and just let it go. So a quick and easy project, but the sky's the limit. This is a great project to do with kids, um, a fun project to do, um, you know, girls' night, guys' night, I don't know about guys' night, but, you know, girls' night, guys' night, um, 
family, friends, make Mother's Day, Father's Day, you know, just really have fun with it. Just enjoy it. Enjoy Earth Day. Because it was Earth Day this month, I wanted to do something with a recycled project. And this is a great way to use up just things that you have around your house and create something cool. If you want it as a masterpiece, it can stay there forever and ever. The minute you get tired of it, recycle it. It's, it's a lot of fun. So I hope you enjoyed this. Hope you can make your own art. Um, please post some pictures. I'd love to see what you have created and what your ideas are. So thank you again, and I will see you next time. Bye.